So today, the House Ways and Means Committee, they released former President Donald Trump's tax returns for the past six years. Now, this is extremely important and we need to address this as soon as possible. Here's what's happening. We are about to see a back and forth from lawmakers. We've already heard from multiple Republicans saying that they are going to go after the Biden family. They're going to release tax returns from them. They will go after the Hunter Biden situation. There's a lot of stuff going on. Now, I bring this up because this isn't just starting from today. This is from the January 6th incident from last year, or technically from, yeah, I guess last year. But again, this is a big, big issue. If you thought Congress didn't get anything done last year in 2021 or in 2022, guess what? It's about to get worse. So we're going to actually go over what some of the things uh, the tax returns are revealing. I want to get your take on this as well. Now, I'm going to show you an article from CNN. So uh, again, this is from CNN. So just you know, bear in mind. But uh, as of right now, I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Do you think President former President Donald Trump should have paid more in taxes? Or do you think that he did exactly what he could do because it was under the letter of the law? He didn't do anything illegal and he did exactly what the IRS allows the American people to do. Now, I just wanna say, I'm not an accountant. I didn't go to school for this. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a tax expert by any means, but I'm a business owner. One of the things that I can tell you is that a business owner gets to take a lot of deductions. But again, they have to be legal. They have to be deductions for the business. So President uh, Trump, he has multiple businesses. He gets money from a lot of different people, a lot of different countries. And we're gonna go through that in today's video. So let's get right down to it. And again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Now, let's go through this. It says key takeaways from six years of Donald Trump's federal tax returns. And here we can see, right here, it says, um, for example, his returns show that he carried forward a $105 million loss in 2015 and $73 million in 2016. The thousands of pages of documents from the former president's personal and business federal tax returns, which spanned the years 2015 through 2020, provide a complex web of raw data about Trump's finances. Now, I wanna to touch on one thing for a second. What are we gonna get out of this? According to some, it's gonna shed light on his, his personal finances. It's going to be a personal attack on him, which will probably try to prevent him from running for office once again. That's what we are expecting. Now, I also wanna go back and read some other things. Let's go back and look at this. So right here it says, returns shed light on questionable, questionable tax claims. It says, um, uh, on the third paragraph says, the JCT argued that an auditor should investigate the loan agreements Trump made with his children. The reason why, because it's because of the interest rates, right? The reason why, in each year of his presidency, for example, Trump claimed he received exactly $18,000 in interest on a loan he gave to his daughter Ivanka and $8,715 in interest from his son Donald Trump Jr. in 2017 and 2019. He also received exactly $24,000 from his son Eric Trump and Eric uh, paid him $19,605 in interest in 2020. And at the very bottom, you can see it says, it's unusual to have interest in round numbers, very rare. This is from Martin Schell, a former supervisory um, special agent for the IRS Criminal Investigation Unit. Now, why, why wouldn't he have been investigated before? Was it just because he's the president? Uh, some people say yes, other people say no, that that shouldn't be an issue, right? Now, Here's something that was revealed, and I, I want to I want to talk about this for a second because it says right here, <clears throat> returns show he held foreign bank accounts while in office. Now, I don't think it's illegal to have a foreign bank account, right? Many people have foreign bank accounts. 
You know, it's just what we do. But here it says, Trump reported having foreign bank accounts between 2015 and 2020, including a bank account in China between 2015 and 2017. His tax returns show. Trump was required to report the accounts to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Uh, the filings show that the former president maintained foreign bank accounts in countries such as the United Kingdom, Ireland, and China. Then it goes on to say, uh, you know, the fourth paragraph, 2020 disclosure of business dealings in China came as the Trump campaign sought to portray Biden as a puppet of China. Biden's income tax or Biden's income tax returns and financial disclosures showed no business dealings or income from China. The returns also show that Trump paid more in foreign taxes than in U.S. federal income taxes in 2017, the first year of his presidency. Now, it says. Uh, in 2017, Trump paid $750 in U.S. federal income taxes because of large carry-forward losses that he claimed in prior years. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't realize. Is, and again, I'm not a tax expert. Go and talk to an expert if you have questions on this. But you can take losses into following years. Okay. And the, the reason why I bring this up, it's not because I, I think a lot of people are going to go and, you know, take losses into, uh, you know, 2024, 2025 or whatever. Uh, because again, you got it as a business owner, there's a lot of things you can do. The IRS, and this is what, this is how the IRS has pretty much, uh, you know, written the, the code is they're rewarding people that um, can provide jobs to others. So businesses, they're rewarding others that invest, right? investors and the IRS rewards people that are contributing to the growth of the US economy. So with that said, who contributes to the growth? It's usually the businesses. Okay. It, it's unfortunate because there's there's more employees than than small businesses. But honestly if you create a small business and you can take deductions right against your business because you're making an income, great. Right? Why not do that? That's kind of what uh, former President Donald Trump is doing. Now, here's something else. And I want to touch on this really quick um, because I know a lot of people are going to bring this one up. And this is right here. Trump claimed no charitable deductions in 2020. Now, why is this such a big deal? This is a big deal because and it says right here, Trump pledged he would donate the entirety of his 400 thousand dollar salary to charity each year he frequently boasted about donating parts of his quarterly paycheck to various government agencies now it also says while the press doesn't like writing about it nor do i need them to i donate my yearly presidency presidential salary of four hundred thousand dollars to different agencies throughout the year that's what he tweeted, tweeted back in march 2019 but if he donated his 2020 salary he didn't claim it on his taxes why Right? Why is it not claimed there? And it says um, right here, uh, Trump's finances took a sizable hit in 2020, probably as a result of the pandemic and the lack of demand for vacations and lodging in his hotels. Trump reported large donations in charity in 2018 and 2019, helping reduce the amount he owed on millions of dollars in income he reported in those years. But Trump posted a massive $4.8 million dollar adjusted loss in 2020, a year which alone wiped out his federal income uh, tax obligation. Trump paid zero dollars in federal income taxes in 2022, or 2020, excuse me. Now, why is this such a big deal? Let me ask you this. How much money did you pay in federal income tax in 2020? What about 2021? What's your estimate for 2022? It's probably because you paid more than $0 or $750, right? And that's part of the issue is, and we learned this years ago, that President Trump didn't pay anything or paid $750 and that was it. But again, again, I'm not a tax professional here, but when you have real estate, real estate takes a lot off of your income simply because you can deduct it, right? There's depreciation. You can deduct a lot. So just keep that in mind. Now, here's another thing. It says right here, 
the Joint Committee on Taxation raised questions about the accuracy of some enormous charitable de deductions Trump claimed in previous year's tax returns, including large and unsubstantiated cash gifts. Trump also claimed a $21.1 million deduction in 2015 for donating 158 acres uh, of his uh, 212 acre property called Seven Springs in North Castle, New York. The donation, which was made to a land trust, is a is a focus of the Manhattan District Attorney's criminal investigation of the Trump Organization's finances. Okay. Now, there's one last thing I want to address right here, and this is something that we have seen before. Is because uh, President Trump said, and again, I'm not trying to bash him or bash Democrats or whatever. I'm just trying to get to you'll fill you in on what's going on, but. Trump said that one of his uh, tax you know, changes uh, back in what 2018, um, 2017, this was going to cost him a lot of money. Let's go ahead and read this. Trump own, Trump's own 2017 tax law appears to have reduced the amount he was able to deduct from tax bill. It says, Trump claimed that the 2017 Republican tax plan uh, he championed and signed would cost him and his family a fortune. It's not clear that it did, but it does appear to have limited the amount that he could claim in one part of his com complex tax return. The 2017 tax law capped the state and local uh, tax deduction known as the SALT tax. It was uh, to $10,000 per year. In previous years, tax filers were allowed to deduct more of their SALT payments. Although the law was passed in 2017, it didn't apply until 2018 tax year. In 2018, tax, uh, Trump listed $10.5 million in state and local taxes, but could deduct just $10,000 uh, from that uh, from his taxes. In 2019, Trump paid $8.4 million in salt, but was capped at $10,000. And in 2020, Trump said he paid $8.5 million in salt, but claimed the maximum allowable $10,000. By comparison, in 2016 and 2017, Trump was able to deduct significantly more from state and local taxes. For example, in 2016 and 2017, he deducted $5.2 million each year in SALT payments. Now, this was an issue, and it still is an issue, right? Because Democrats wanted a SALT tax uh, deduction increase. Because, and here's the way it works, uh, so just to give you an idea, and again, I'm not a tax professional, but here's the way it works. If you pay, let's say, you know, uh, anybody, you know, Joe Schmo, he owes money to the federal government, right? He, let's say he, he made $100,000, okay, great. Well, with the SALT tax deduction, if he owns property, right, state and local um, taxes, right, you would be able to deduct up to $10,000. So you take that ten thousand dollars off of your your you know state and local taxes, right? You take that off. You don't have to pay. So let's say you made a hundred thousand dollars. You don't have to pay on that that salt tax again. Okay. Again, I'm I'm not a tax professional here. Okay. But just trying to you know clarify this. <clears throat> but this is where people say he he uh, what to say uh, that he was he was pretty much. He didn't pay as much as, as uh, he made it seem to, to be like he was going to lose, right? That's part of the issue. Now, here's the other thing. What we are hearing is that this is going to cause a lot of issues, right? Because, and the reason why this is going to cause issues is because this is something that they didn't want to get out. N nobody probably wants their tax returns to get out, right? So, you know, you know President Trump seeing his tax returns get leaked, well, he's, he's looking a little angry, right? You know, obviously that's not from today, but you get the idea. Now, here's what I can tell you. His tax returns being released, this is going to cause issues to start in Congress. Day one, we're going to see issues, okay? So next week, I believe, is it next week? Or is it January 9th? It might be January 9th. As soon as lawmakers get back, as soon as the new Congress starts, what I can tell you is, there is going to be issues. There's going to be a lot of issues. So if you were hoping that Congress can work together, which I was, well, guess what? They might not be able to work together for long because they kind of screwed things up. So 
that's what we know at this time. As always, as I know more, I promise, I'll come back on and share all the latest news and updates again. Just want to thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.